Hello, my name is David Kersley. I'm a certified SOLIDWORKS application engineer with Go Engineer. In this video, we will be discussing bill of material customization by writing equations using custom properties. For those of you that have taken the essentials class, this assembly should look very familiar to you. In the last class, the question came up, Dave, can we alter the bill of material to add things like spares, cost, and then have it produce a total cost for the total assembly? The answer is yes. To understand where these custom properties come from, we have to go back to the part level. And if we go back to the part level, we should all be familiar with this little icon here at the top where it says File Properties. And if I click on it, we have all kinds of properties we can write. We get, in this case, we have Description, Part Number, Cost, Material, Country of Origin, Total Cost, and Spares. I've left total cost blank on this one. And the reason I did that is because we're gonna write an equation to it in the bill of material. In this case, I wrote a column for a custom property called spares, but in this case, we're not gonna ship any spare brackets with this part. We're gonna hit okay. And we're gonna close that part down. And this gets us back to our bill of material. And we'll notice that over here, and we have an exploded view of our assembly, and we have our bill of material. Well, let's go ahead and add in the bill of material. We'll start from scratch, and let's put in a fresh bill of material so that we can uh, show you how the steps for writing those equations. So over here on the right, this, e this uh, exploded view, the orange border around it means it's not active. So if I click on it, it means that view is active. We can drag it or drop it and move it around. In this case, we want to go to tables at the top of our screen under the annotations and we're going to hit Bill of Materials. And over on the left, the, feet, the um, Bill of Material Manager is going to pop up. And right now we're putting in a BOM standard. And our BOM type is um, on part level. And the reason it's on part level is we don't have any sub-assemblies with this. Maybe if this was all sub-assemblies, well, a really large um, scale assembly, we might want to do top level and put a bunch of sub-assemblies in from there. In this case, we're only going to do parts, parts only. Um, under part configuration grouping, I'm going to make sure mine's checked to display configurations of the same part as separate items. And the reason I want to do that is if I click on display all configurations of the same part as one item, when I look at my pins over here, I've got um, a long pin, which is item 5, and I've got some short pins, which is also item 5, but this is a quantity of 2. And if I had this one checked when uh, display all configurations of the same part as one item, in my bill of material, when it came in, all three of these would have the exact same cost. And we would either be too expensive or not uh, have the proper cost because these were not these, uh, this one's more expensive to make than these short ones here. So I'm gonna click on display configurations and I'm gonna scroll down. I'm gonna make sure that my item numbers start at item one and they increment in one. If I wanted it to be one, three, five, seven, nine, I would just simply change that to two. And that would uh, make every Basically, your bill of material again would be one, three, five, seven, nine. I'm going to change it back to one, and I'm going to check all uppercase. And I'm going to hit the green check, and we're going to just drag and drop this uh, bill of material at random over here. And what we'll notice is that the item numbers are coincided with our balloons. And what we can do is we're going to change this um, to our custom property for part numbers, because we have custom part num property uh, part numbers. And when we move these around in this order, the balloon number over in our exploded view will also change because it's associated to this bill of materials. So if I click on uh, our bill of material now, we have four columns, item number, part number, description, and quantity. If I move my mouse over to the left, I kind of get a, a little crosshairs and I can move this bill of material around. And if I move my mouse to this kind of this upper level here, I get this property manager. And this property manager asked me, do I want to change the document font? If I wanted to change it from uh, Century Gothic to one of the other fonts uh, loaded in um, our machine, we absolutely could. I could change the text height. I could also make it bold or italicized. And if I click over here, I'm out of the bill of material. And I want to change the custom properties of column B. So if I click on B, again, my property manager comes up. And I can do things like left align, center, and right align. I'm going to keep it on center align. This one aligns you to the top of the cell, the bottom of the cell, and the middle of the cell. I'm going to keep it checked on middle. 
This would be, do we want all uppercase? And we do. The other ones we're going to pay attention to is this symbol here. This is our equation symbol. And we're going to use that when we write our, uh, bring our custom properties over. These two adjust the cell height and width. And we're going to pay attention to this guy right here, column property. Uh, we want to change the properties in B. So let's click on column property. And where it says column type, we're actually going to go over and hit custom property. And this is going and grabbing those properties that we wrote in at the part level. And in this case, we're going to type in part number or select part number from the pull down menu. And you'll notice again that these are items 1, 8. Uh, they kind of coincide with the balloons over here. We're going to hit OK. OK. And I can drag and move these around as I want. And you'll kind of see that there's a little arrow that comes with it. And it kind of tells you where it's going to go in the bill of material. And we'll take just a second here. We can kind of clean this up. Notice that our numbers over here on the right are changing as we move this bill of material around. So it's pretty easy to set this guy in place, make a few quick changes. And uh, we've got our bill of material in the correct order as far as part numbers. Doesn't take but a second. There we go. There we go. And so now I've got them in one through, uh, uh, part numbers one through eight. And notice that again, because we had selected that we wanted them to show as individual, the configurations as individual parts, we now have an uh, line item um, five, and we have an item number six um, in our bill of material. And it also displays the quantity. With this, this works much like an Excel spreadsheet. I can go in and insert, and I can do a row below. And now I have a row below, and we're going to use this when we write out our, this is basically going to give us uh, the ability to do a total cost of our, our bill of material. When we click on column D, we want to add a column off to the right. So if we right click on column D, we're going to hit insert, and we're going to do column right. Our, our little property manager comes up, and we're going to do custom property again, and we're going to go grab spares. And anywhere that we added a, a, a spare quantity to our, our properties, it's now pushed over to our bill of material. For example, this one is actually going to come with three parts. This will come in the assembled, and then you have a bag of your spare parts. The next thing we want to do is we're going to do insert, and we're going to do a column right, and we're going to do cost. And notice that those costs that we had over again over at the part level have pushed over to here. And the cool part about those uh, parts over at the, at the part level, again, they do push over to the PDM. So if you uh, wanted to write these to your data card, you absolutely could. Um, and, and that helps you there. I'm going to move this over so we get a little more room. And lastly, we want to put one more column in. And we're going to do insert column right. And we're going to do this one called total cost. And if you remember, we didn't have any value because we want to write our equation to this column. So um, let's zoom in a little bit. I'm going to click on column G. And again, our little bomb property manager pops up. And we're going to hit the equation symbol. And an equation is already in. You can see it highlighted in blue. I'm going to hit the delete key and take that equation out of there because we're going to write our own custom property. So we have to remember kind of order of operations. What we want to do is we want to add quantity plus spares multiplied by cost to equal total cost. So I'm going to hit a left parentheses. I'm going to hit quantity. Type in the plus sign. I'll go back to column. I'm going to click on spares. Then I'm going to hit the space bar multiplied by and hit another space. And here's, I'm going to go to columns and I'm going to get cost. So if we look at our equation, we've got quantity plus spares in parentheses. And what that's going to do is our order of operations is going to happen first. Again, quantity plus spares is going to happen and we're going to multiply that by the cost. And we're going to hit our green check mark. We're going to hit OK. And notice over here on the right in our Column G, our total cost is now populated. We've got $14.65. Uh, these two parts at $1.85 would be $3.70. And now what we need to do is total these parts up. So if I click on this cell here, I get the equation symbol one more time. So I'm going to hit equation, and it's blank at this point. 
I'm actually going to go to functions. And this is much like Excel. Again, I'm going to go over here and I'm, I can do things like if, average, count, min, max. I'm going to do sum. And I'm going to left mouse click on the $14.65. And I'm just going to drag and get all the properties in our total cost column. And notice it says G2 through G10. We can notice that that's line items. Same thing as over here, 2 through 10. I'm going to hit the green check mark. And we now have our bill of material that we've customized the order to. We wrote a custom property for the part number. We added spares, cost, and total cost. And so we've written a custom equations in there using those properties. This has been David Gersley with Go Engineer. I hope you found this SolidWorks tutorial helpful. Please check out our YouTube video library or enroll in one of our in-class or online training courses at goengineer.com.